Nick Smith. Adventure level, five. Human. American. Should we ask Imlor if he can take us? I asked my brothers. Nash rubbed his neck and York tapped his chin as if he was thinking. We walked along the busy streets of Kokena in silence for a few moments. I don't know. He did say he wanted to spend more time with his family, Nash said. We might be better off finding a caravan that's already going to Bolasir and just tagging along. Before we see to transportation, we should see if we can get your weapons and armour repaired, York added. If I recall correctly, there are a couple of enchanters that might be able to do it quickly. Enchanters? Not a smith? I asked. Enchanters use magic to mend weapons and armour, he explained. It's a fairly quick process compared to doing it manually. Costs more, though, Nash grumbled. It's not that much more expensive, York argued. Plus, it's the fastest way to get your weapons fixed. Come on. York led us through the city in search of an enchanter. We passed by several stalls selling various foods and trinkets, buildings advertising various goods and services, and alleyways that were definitely shady gathering spots. Finally, we came to a part of the city that smelled like hot metal. The normal sound of people talking was replaced by the ringing of hammers striking steel, and the occasional hiss of rapidly cooling heat. Let's see. York looked around. Ah, there! An enchanter! He pointed to a brick building with a sign hanging off the side of it that had some writing, and a drawing of a star above an anvil. As we approached the building, I wondered if Ten knew about enchantments. Hey, Ten? No, it interrupted me. What do you mean, no? I thought angrily. You don't get to ask me questions until you answer mine. How did you stop me from taking control? Ten matched my anger. First of all, I don't know. Second of all, even if I did know, I still wouldn't tell you, because then you'd find a way around what I did and take control of my body away from me again. This conversation had been happening intermittently, ever since I woke up after that battle. I don't really remember what I did. All I remember is suddenly feeling dizzy, and thinking to myself that I can't let Ten take control. Can't really remember much after that, probably a consequence of being thrown like a ragdoll. The monster had lashed out with just one of its claws, as if on instinct, if it hadn't been for my curious. We could have died. We would have died if it weren't for your companions, Ten said. Even if the monster had left you alone after it struck you, I wouldn't have been able to repair that damage without Joni's healing spells. I don't want to die, Nick. Well, neither do I, but I'm not going to get any stronger if you keep taking control of my body at the first sign of trouble. It's my job to keep us alive, I retorted, not yours. That is simply not true. My mandate is to keep you alive and aid your growth. Obviously, that means letting you fight things you can beat, and even things that are challenging for you to beat. So I won't be taking over your body as often as you're implying. But you cannot grow if you're dead. So when we run into an enemy that you cannot beat on your own, it only makes sense for me to take over and help you beat it. That's the whole reason I have the ability to take control in the first place. Yeah, well, you don't have the ability to take control anymore. So that throws that theory out of the window. And by refusing to answer my questions, you're not fulfilling your mandate of aiding my growth either. As I followed York into the building, I felt a sharp sting behind my eyes that told me I won the argument. Worth it. Behind the counter was a tall blonde man with shining green eyes. I almost thought he was human, but his ears were unnaturally pointed, just like everyone else I'd seen so far. An elf, probably. Hello, potential customers. I am Arias. How can I help you today? He asked. We've got some weaponry that needs rapid repair, York answered. A sword and an axe. I'd rather have the other sword repaired than the axe, Nash said. Or maybe all three if the price is right. Well, let's have a look at the weapons then, the elf chuckled. 
Nash pulled his weapons out and set them on the counter, and I followed suit, adding my curious that had a fairly large hole in it. Arias glanced at the items and then at us. Now that I was closer, he looked a lot less human. His skin had a slight green tint, and he didn't have a single polished tooth in his mouth. It kind of reminded me of videos about the uncanny valley phenomena. He raised an eyebrow as he looked me over. His eyes lingered over my ears and then met mine. That's a pretty traumatic injury, brother, Arias said. I'm not an elf, I replied. I'm a human. Um, a what? He asked. A pain customer, York interrupted with a smile. Oh, right, good point. The elf laughed nervously. All right, let's have a look here. Arias picked up the remains of each weapon and examined them thoroughly, one after the other. Finally, he looked over my armor and nodded solemnly to himself. Well, the good news is that I can repair them, Arias said, setting the armor back onto the counter. The bad news is that it's going to cost 98 silver and take a few hours. Each? Nash asked suspiciously. The elf laughed. No, total. The eleven blades are the biggest chunk of that, coming in at thirty silver each. The cutlass I can do for nineteen. The flesh render I can do for ten. Though you save a lot of money on that by just letting me shave it down a bit and redo the serration. The armor's the cheapest because it's going to be the easiest. Hell, it'll do most of the work itself. What do you mean? I asked. The enchantment on it is self-repair. Given enough time, it fixes itself. All I've got to do is rush it a bit and you're good. How long would it take to shave the axe? Nash asked. I've got a backlog on the smithing. It would be at least two days. Damn. Gotta have it done today. Well, 98 silver will see them all done in about two hours. Why are the elven blades so expensive? I asked. All three of them looked at me with raised eyebrows, as if I had asked why Jerky was chewy. I couldn't help but deflate a bit under their gaze. Because the crystalline structure of Elvish Forgecraft is... intricate. Well, proper Elvish Forgecraft, at least. A knockoff has the same kind of steel you'd find from a dwarven journeyman, Arias laughed. These, though, were smithed by a proper Grandmaster, with good old-fashioned Magicite. Magicite? I asked. I... yes, Magicite. It's a somewhat rare metal that's notoriously fickle to work with. Adamantium and Mithralite have similar properties, but Adamantium requires a much higher temperature and Mithralite requires actual spellcraft to work with. Magicite, though, is very durable, flexible, and holds a good magic charge. But you have to have the heat on it just right, or it becomes more fragile than glass. When alloyed with steel, it becomes even more durable, he explained. I wouldn't want to meet a monster who could break these blades. Yeah, neither did we, York chuckled. You got changed for a gold? Sure do. I'll cover it, Nash said. You hold on to yours. Buy a book to read for the trip or something. He put his gold coin on the counter and the elf swat with two silver coins. Pleasure doing business with you. Feel free to have a look around. My apprentice will be coming out front if you want to buy something. Araya smiled wide, demonstrating oddly flat teeth. Or you can just check back in a couple of hours. We'll check back. We have to arrange transport to Bolasir. Bolasir? You may want to check with the gnome next door. He's going to be shipping some items to Bolasir for me, the elf said. Let me guess, the gnome's name is Imlor? I asked with a chuckle. Well, yes, but that's not a particularly clever guess. A lot of gnomes are named Imlor. Huh? It's the most common gnomish name, and it came from Imlor Krav, York interjected. A legendary gnomish sorcerer. He invented several spells and defeated several powerful enemies. Yep, Arias said. Anyways, this gnome's name is Imlor Tula. I laughed. I guess right. He's the one who brought us here. We were thinking he was going to be spending time with his family. Oh, Arias asked. His travels must have been unusually hectic. 
Regardless, this delivery was agreed upon before he left for the dungeon settlement. It should net him enough to hire someone else to drive the cart, though. Then he'll be able to stay home more often. Talena will be thrilled. At first. The other three chuckled, but I didn't get the joke. Instead, something had caught my eye. A glass display that contained a singular item that shouldn't be there. It was a helmet, made of what looked to be bronze or brass. The reason it shouldn't be here is because I've seen it before. Dozens of times, in dozens of different places. Movies, shows, video games, comic books, even online videos of cosplayers. It was a Spartan helmet. There was no mistaking the iconic design. Red bristles that stuck straight up adorned the crown of the helm, travelling down the back and culminating in a ponytail. The eye holes were rounder than I remember them being, but the nose guard without a mouth covering left little doubt as to where the design had come from. As I looked into the face of the helm, I felt a pull. I want nothing more than to put it on and find my way to my goals. It will protect me as I cleave through my enemies on my way back to Kaz. The irons on the helmet seemed to burn into my own, and for a moment I imagined her playfully taking the helmet off of me and kissing me. I was happy, she was happy, and the helmet was happy for us. A tear ran from one of my eyes. Careful, Arias said, snapping me out of it. I realised that I had been clenching my fist so hard, my nails had dug into my skin. I took a deep breath and let it out with a sigh. I wiped my face and looked at the elf. How much? I asked. You sure? Yes. Wait, Nash said. What's going on? It would appear that Ares has chosen a new champion, Arias answered. Ares? The question hung in my throat. Yes, that's the helmet's name. Named after a god of war from another world, according to the annuals that brought it to this one. It chooses a champion and protects them, until they pick a fight they cannot win. Then it escorts their soul to the afterlife and waits for another champion, he explained. At least, that's how the legends go. In practice, it's a heavily enchanted helmet that won't activate its enchantments for just anyone. I keep it around because I like how it looks, and it's an interesting story to tell potential customers. Ares, the ancient Greek god of war and courage. How did the annuals know about that? Have they been to my world? Or maybe the whole thing is made up? But who here would know of Ares? Another human, maybe? What kind of enchantments does it have, your cast, oblivious to my concerns? It has basic protection against the elements, piercing resistance, and a kinetic intensifier in his metal. The brush has a cleanliness enhancer, and another, more unique enchantment. If the annuals really did bring the helmet here, were they also the ones that enchanted it? Or did it come from another version of my world, one with magic and stuff? A kinetic intensifier and a helmet. You don't usually see those on anything other than hammers. Nash commented. What's the unique enchantment do? Yulk asked. I'm not 100% sure. It's conditional and the script is confusing. I assume that it will only take effect if worn by someone that it chooses, but I can't tell you exactly what will happen. Just that it has something to do with its existence. Arias shrugged. Do you know where we can find annuals? I asked. The three looked at me curiously. It occurred to me that my question had come out of nowhere to them. I... I don't know, Arias stammered. They haven't left Haven since the Cataclysm Wars, I think, and nobody knows how to get to Haven. Why'd you ask, Yulk asked. The annuals might know of my... home. And how I can get back. Really? Nash raised an eyebrow. Fine then. How much for the helmet? I... well, normally it wouldn't be for sale, but... well... Arias pursed his lips thoughtfully. I'll let it go for 50 silver if the human puts it on here. I'd love to see what the unique enchantment does. Deal, I said. <laughs>